so far behind in terms of editing that I need to do something about this so I decided to wrap everything up inside one video that is going to summarize everything from so many videos I have from like several months ago till now when I actually I've been moving the boat because someone needs to be building some audience here and if I lose myself into so many details and geeking about boat refit I'm never going to make it so starting with fun stuff engine work engine work I've been starting from the scratch I had an old engine not working I've been doing it from zero so you can ask to any sailor he will probably tell you that engine problem on the sailing boat are the worst so one good thing about working in the engine room is that you have plenty of space not true this is why i look really ridiculous So now it's all the game about fitting it in the engine room. I did this with poor wood because like good wood is very expensive. So to do the fitting, you see this, it was missing a bit of wood. So I did these examples and now I am having a friend who is doing them properly for me with, uh, proper, with proper wood. The real challenge when you put an engine into a, a boat like this is to have the um, a proper alignment between the propeller shaft and the engine. If the alignment is not perfect, there is go it's going to create a lot of vibration and at the end of the day it will create leakings of water and your engine won't work properly. So it's a kind of millimetric work which is not the my uh, specialty from the building the burst to putting a new engine relatively new engine a 1gm10 uh, yanma The engine room is, is ready. I also built this kind of barrier around the engine. So if there is any leak of uh, oil or uh, diesel, it will stay here. It won't spread in all the bilge. The engine is like 90 kg uh, and I'm by myself. And so there we go. The engine is in its engine room so the idea with the foldable prop is that like this it's when the engine is off the water goes around the prop and doesn't create any drag and when you start the engine the engine start turning and the centrifuge whatever it's called force is pulling the prop open and then can work properly 
I've been building the burst, I've been installing it, and it's actually working. I love to show you this in the next video. Um, electricity, I've been rewiring all the boat from zero, building two different panels, uh, electric panels, uh, starting to run new lines, putting um, fitting for the solar panels, building a frame for, for the solar panels. I've also been um, installing all the electronics, the, um, the Raymarine electronics, so an autopilot and a depth sounder. As um, I showed before, I installed these small links along the way so I can uh, run the so I can run the, the cable without using any type of uh, plastic zip ties or anything. So. For the electrical panels that I've been building, I have this one, which will be the main one. I've been building this frame here to organize the cables. Ready? One, two... Light! It's so good! I'm so happy about this! Um, and the LEDs are looking pretty good, so I'm really excited about this. I have a small light here for the storage and the bathroom. Um, I have... Music, which is absolutely key. Look at this! Finally! So, yeah, most of it is done. Ah, I can't tell you how happy I am right now. Um, I've been doing lots of work also on the bilge of the boat. All the bottom of the boat in the Ecume de Mer, some version, are uh, kind of a plastic fitting, you know at the bottom um, I've been sending this uh, down it was horrible it was really hell to uh, to send so this is the inside of the boat see how it looks like everywhere it's been um, snowing because the dust is literally everywhere but uh, at least I had a, a clean uh, bilge which wasn't like keeping the, the, moist, the moisture and uh, the, the water between this plastic and the, the fiberglass hull. I've been sending everything, letting it dry for a couple of months and then putting, putting back some fiberglass on top and paint. The rudder also, I've been working on it a lot. There was a couple of parts that were broken. So I was all happy with my layer of resin on the on the rudder and I was working on something else inside the boat waiting for it to dry and then I come back and look to what I discover I don't know if you can see on video but it's like hundreds of bugs that are like stuck on the fresh resin I rebuild this part and now the uh, rudder is working properly so that's perfect on the back of the boat to add some extra room I've installed a platform it's something I found for uh, maybe like 70 uh, euros on internet and that's actually fitting perfectly the boat it's been a bit of work to uh, fit it properly at the back of the boat but it's amazing I can't wait to test it to te test it in the water um, also I've been uh, building a bowsprit. I have on the boat um, a spinnaker, asymmetrical spinnaker. I thought it was nice to have a bowsprit to set it up. It also adds up a really nice look uh, on the boat. Again, it's something I've been engineering in my head for a long time. I built it. Let's see how it works at sea. About the interior, I've been doing so much work, paints, lots of parts, I've been trying to paint it so the boat looks uh, nice and fresh. I've been doing so much vanishing that vanishing is horrible. So this is the third layer of vanish, still like two, maybe three other ones to go. Yeah, vanishing is really annoying, you have to do it over and over again. On some boats they go up to 14 layers, but uh, I'm not that crazy. But at least 
all the wood parts are protected and it's kind of looking nice, it's worth the pain. Um, I've been installing some uh, pumps, one for uh, the clear water that goes straight to my uh, water tank and another one for seawater so you can pump seawater to clean your dishes and clean anything. Uh, seawater is unlimited, you just pump it, wash whatever you have to wash and uh, it helps you save clear water, so I've installed this. Also, I've been installing lots of new uh, fittings, new lockers, new um, way to organize the boat so I can make the most of the space I have, which is really limited. So I've tried to um, install lots of new things. For the interior fitting, I'm... I don't have much time and also I found a solution which is really convenient. It's using plastic uh, shelves that are like already made, I buy them. And they're quite easy because they come in every shape and size. Uh, it's just about finding the right fitting and you can adapt them. I build a small tab here, a tab under for the under part and then there you go, a bungee and this is secured. This is again something that is going to probably evolve a lot uh, while I'm sailing, when I put things to use and see what's more convenient. Also, all the hatches, I've been changing them because they were probably the same age of the boat and they were all cracked and <clears throat> you could barely see through, so now they're crystal clear. I still haven't removed the small a protective layer on top of them so I can't wait to, to do this but everything has been changed and I'm pretty sure I did the ceiling well so they won't take water I've been working also on the thing I have no idea how it's called the thing where the anchor um, goes through to, to drop I've been working on something that would put it a bit out of the boat so it would not touch the hull it's a bit conflicting with the bow spirit and Let's see how this works. I don't think it's major trouble. It's comfortable to work here, Emric. It's genial. And the last thing I did before uh, moving the boat out was doing the non-skid paint. It's not too much of a big deal, but it's about like cleaning everything. So, that has been nice enough to clean everything. Now we're going to put some masking tape. Putting lots of masking tape, making sure that you have the right consistency for the um, for this paint and with the the micro uh, the micro spheres that you add to the to the paint to make it uh, non-skid and actually it turned out really well. So I'm really happy about this. So yeah, that's about it for all the work that I had still to talk about. There is a couple of that I left aside. Next video will be more fun, will be about like moving the boat, will be uh, the boat on the shipyard, next to the sea, almost ready to get in the water. So keep posted. Also there is like two people I would like to thank so much. Uh, plenty of people have been helping me on this refit, but especially I would like to thank uh, my friend that has been helping me with all the welding of some details on the platform, of something on the stanchion, on some stuff on the solar panels. It's been so helpful that Thierry, merci beaucoup. Je sais pas comment j'aurais fait pour toutes ces soudures sans toi. C'est génial, merci beaucoup. And also uh, Laurent Chamas. You helped me so much, um, so I don't know. Um, so if this episode took a little bit longer to come, is that my computer, my previous computer, literally uh, melted because it wasn't handling all the editing. Uh, Laurent just came out and said like, yeah, you know, I have a laptop for you. So man, thank you so much. Uh, this is awesome. It's been a little bit difficult to get used to uh, Adobe Premiere and to using a Mac, but now it works like a dream. So thank you so, so much for this. So cheers and see you next episode.